Uh, and I know y'all that were here last week too, uh, feel like you've been sort of stirred up in a really good way. And so thanks for being here. And again, there's coffee if you want it. And uh, Mark Mullinax. Any left. What? I think it's all gone. Oh, really? oh, is it? No, the, the, the decaf is gone. The cap, there's still oh, cap. Oh, there's cap. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Mark Mullinax, everyone. Hello. 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 Welcome back. May your days begin in peace and end in radical hope. All right. Uh, so you have a couple of new people <coughs> today. Anybody? That I haven't given. Were you here? Okay, I have something. No, I was not here. You're not here, so I, I have. Was a, not here last time. Okay. Oh. As a handout from last time. Okay. Thank oh, you. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Okay. okay. Anybody else need last week's? Okay. And and today's it's going to be on the screen. But if anybody needs a larger version that you could have in your lap, I have three copies of this. If, you, if what's going to be on the screen will be actually if you need a handout. If it would be easier for you to follow this in your laps rather than watch it on the screen, be my guest. Or if you want to take these, if they're still here, if you want to take these afterwards. Okay? okay. Because we're not going to get through it. Okay, there's a I, lot I'm about Jesus. Take one because Bob's not here. <laughs> all right. And by the way, and all of these will be on the internet. These will be on YouTube. Last week's is already on YouTube. And I'll send all three links to uh, what's his name here. Okay. okay. How are you doing? Good. Good. Questions before we begin? Okay. I am going to start referring first of all to the, um, the page with a few, a little bit of red writing on it. Okay? All right. You, you may need that. I'm referring to... Good morning. I'm referring to this right here. Okay? This is the handout for the day. Happy Juneteenth. So, uh, data chain. Up here, Somewhere between 500 to 300 BCE, as before Common Era, or BC as most people know it. Uh, and so it's, it, it, it comes about at a time which scholars call the Axial Age, A-X-I-A-L. So there's a lot of ferment going on around the world of people, philosophers, religion people, spiritual people, asking similar kind of questions about the meaning of life, the part of humans in it, and how to live the best possible life that you can. At the same time, you have the, the ancient Greek philosophers, you have the Hebrew prophets, can I say, anybody say Isaiah or Amos? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, going, they're going on at the same time. Um, and and uh, Hind, Hinduism is already well established in India, but Buddhism is about to come in. Confucianism is happening is about to happen in uh, China as well, and Taoism. So there's a lot of ferment, intellectual, spiritual ferment around the world at the same time, how to live the best possible life. And Taoism is going to come at it in a way in which they say the best possible life is one lived in accordance with nature. That is, capital N, nature. Not so, capital S, society. That's going to be Confucianism. And that's going to be Plato, how, or how to live, you know, but how, what is nature? Remember I said last week, uh, Taoism is one of the first, if not the first, um, depictions of the way things are, the theory of everything. Okay, so it's going to be that, that and so that's what they want to do. And, and part of it is living it with nature with an end towards immortality. Now that may be different from what we call immortality, like Easter and things like that, but how to live the longest possible life with the best possible quality at the same time. And that's, that's, the, that's their thing. Even it's, life after death. It, yeah, I mean, if you're a, a Taoist saint, you're considered not really dead, but you're alive not only in the memory, but you're, you might, your spirit may be lingering around helping to influence things. So there's this, this, this thing. And so, and so there's this idea that, that you are probably familiar, familiar with, that one way to, to live well is to have a reputation that survives you. Okay? We, re we remember Martin Luther King Jr., but we don't remember some other people. Okay? All right. So, so at, the, at the same time that Tao Te Ching is being written, solidified, codified, you have these dots on the first part, the top page, you know, the Assyrian Empire is falling, Persian Empire is uh, arising, 
Roman civilization's beginning, earliest coins, Epic of Gilgamesh, we know from college days that that's the earliest written story ever. Okay. You got the Deuteronomy reforms of King Josiah, Hosiah, Josiah, uh, the prophets Jeremiah and Ezekiel from Judea. Uh, the Israelites reported music theory and proto Corinthian pottery happens in Greece. And democracy begins in Greece. So these things are all happening about the same time. There's a lot, there's a lot of interesting ferment. They didn't have internet. <laughs> okay? They had no email. They had no, no, no Twitter. So these things are happening around the world kind of simultaneously. They're not always asking the same questions or arriving at the same answers, but they are asking, why do I need to be human? And how do I live the best possible life that I have at this moment? Something that you probably ask yourself. Can I get a witness? There we are. Okay. I got a question. <laughs> yes, sir. That doesn't sound like a new question to me. Is that not a perennial question of humans? I mean, you're speaking that of it as a, something sort of new happening. Yeah. Was it something new happening? Or sort of what, 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 what coalescing? It, 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 maybe, well, coalescing, but also these questions are coalescing or get, being gathered into systems of thought most of which survive today. Okay? And we could not say that before with, with stuff before that. But that's not the moment. So, all right. Questions so far? Yes? Is there a concept of life after death in Dallas? Well, not, well, not like we would have it. Um, it but that, that, you're, that there's something about you, your essence does survive especially if you have a good moral life, mm -hmm. and uh, you, you might become a Dallas sage that people would actually look up to, or look to, or even pray for, or burn incense for, mm -hmm. is that kind of thing. Uh, not like the Jewish and then later Christian ideas of, of, an, of, a, of a real kind of physical, spiritual life after you die. Okay. Now, we're going to start talking about Jesus and Tao today. Next week, I'm really excited because that's what I really like about him, because we're going to be talking about social justice in the Tao. We're going to be talking about what it all means. We're going to be talking about holy troublemaking, good troublemaking. <coughs> we're going to be talking about getting into good trouble. Some of my favorite stuff. Anybody, any misfits in the room? <laughs> misfits. We have a meeting of the Misfits Anonymous and Not So Anonymous next week. So I cannot wait for next week. So, and by the way, we will not get through today, so we may do a little cleanup next week just before we begin. But, uh, so, and I can always send this out to people if anybody wants that. So, now the second part of this, the bottom part of this, this handout, uh, Western missionaries, when they translated the Bible into Chinese in the early 1800s, they used the Tao character for the New Testament's most essential, quintessential statement about the nature of Jesus. Okay? And you remember John, John chapter 1, you know, there's, there's, in the beginning was the Word, in the beginning was you know, the Logos. And uh, so this is, this is uh, how they translate it. And I put in bold red the word Tao, because that's the word for Logos, which means in, in our language, Reason or godlike figure, maybe even so. So, so there it is. I'm not going to say it in Chinese for you, but there it is. Verses one and two at the very, you know, in the middle of that first paragraph, and then. Are we reading right to left or left to right? Uh, we're reading uh, left to right. You can do it all three ways: left, to right, right, left, and up, and down. up down from the right to the left. <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. And then at the very last of that first paragraph, you have, and the word, that is, the Tao, became flesh and lived among us. They still do this today. Chinese Bibles still have the same thing. Okay? So, and then John 14, 6 says, Jesus, as the way, as the Tao, uh, there it is again in the very last paragraph uh, of that red writing. Questions? So these are Christian missionaries seeing something in Taoism that kind of reminded them of their Jesus. So do you know in that pretty 
famous verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Do you have to know if that, if that is translated Tao? Yeah. Well, there it is in the last, in this, this uh, yeah. I don't have that, so yeah. I don't have it in front of me. That's okay. Okay, yes. I'm yeah. I, I, am, I am the Tao, mm. the way, mm. uh, and the way. The way is another way to translate in English Tao. Before we get to religion, Tao and way are also the same. Because the early Christians were also called the way. People, people the way. way. Exactly, yes. Yeah. Exactly. So that's so even more ammunition about why the missionaries would choose this Chinese loaded term to express their deepest understandings or highest understandings about what they think Jesus is all about. Question. Please. When, uh, when was the first translation of the Bible in Chinese? I think it was early 1800s. It may have been early, late 1700s, but I think early 1800s. That's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Excuse me. Please. When the early Christians referred to the way, yeah. were they aware of Taoism? Were they actually, okay. So now they didn't have like, internet. No, I know, but yeah. I was wondering, you know, <laughs> yeah. people traveled in the ancient That's world, true. And, and I was wondering if they I had, don't, I there's don't some cross I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. I, we have no evidence. Excuse me. Okay. We have no evidence. Right. But John was using logos. Yeah. I mean, his that, that was his Greek word. That yeah. he sort of borrows from this Greek yeah. philosophy yeah. to talk about which Jesus is, being the logos. But yeah, so which has a very feminine understanding. If you've ever read Proverbs chapter eight, the logos mm -hmm. is that feminine character who is at play with God the Creator doing all the creation. Mm. Okay? So so Logo Sophia is, is the same is one and the same. So so I'm gonna say at the very very bottom it says uh, today we'll see some virtues of simplicity, emptiness, servant leadership, and maybe interruption of an unjust status quo, which I think like the Christian idea it is. But first as Albert Schweitzer said in his uh, book on the, the historical Jesus. He said that all, every time you see a biography or a history of Jesus, it's always going to be through the lens, through the filters, through the eyes of the writer himself or herself. And so we, that is a truism that's probably present in this room. That is, we all who may subscribe to the Christian faith have an idea who Jesus is. But of course, that will correspond to our ideas, our filters, our neuroses. Not that you have neuroses, but, but our ideas of what Jesus is. Does this make sense to you? We see things through our own lenses first. That's a critical sociological statement that we need to get through. So, how make, could you not ever see it yeah. any other way? I yeah, how could you? But most people say, no, I, I believe this is objective and it needs to be my way. And they don't recognize it's their way. I mean, that's a filter. That is a filter. Yeah, that is exactly. So, so, let's get in touch with our filters. What are some of the key personality traits or traits of or teaching of Jesus that you like? Inclusiveness. Inclusiveness, yes. One thing I really like about the character of the New Testament is how it tells people don't tell anybody about the Christ. Yeah, that's a very Taoist understanding. Don't, don't, you know, don't tell anybody. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> put this on a billboard. Oh, excuse me, people do that, don't they? He taught it. <laughs> I mean, he taught it in parables or koans, but yes. he's yeah. sort of riddly kind of teaching. Not that he don't, don't, they're, <clears throat> they're subversive teaching. It and always turn things upside down. And he's not going to be exactly direct. I'm, now I'm going to upend you. <clears throat> just as it happened. Okay. So yes. Good. 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 Yes. I think um, uh, he was a good teacher for anti-neurosis. Uh, be, be not afraid is his primary teaching. Be not afraid. We're going to see that today. We really are. I, I hope we will if we get there. Okay. Yes. He took time away from the group. Yeah. Meditate, yeah. Be in the presence. Yeah. If anybody was ever mindful, he probably was. He yeah. seemed. Another. He seemed to not let people peg him down as 
the son of mm -hmm. God. Yeah, he did. He didn't like call himself the son of man. They would say you're the son of God. He would kind of dodge that, which is yeah. interesting, isn't it? Because it's like he wouldn't. Mm -hmm. He. I don't know. It, it, I find that just intriguing that he somehow would he, not let himself be labeled. He deflected attention from himself, especially in the book of Mark. Uh -huh. it's, you know, Mark is called the secret of the Messiah. And, and if you really read it, those Messiahs don't get it. They have no clue. At the very last verse, they walk, they run away afraid from the cross. They don't get Jesus. They never did. Mm -hmm. So, okay. All right. Well, shall we go to what are prepared, prepared today? Any questions? Questions that are, are, are always great. Okay, so do that. So what, what does it matter if Christ is born in the world but not in me? would be a good way to say it. And to say it in a kind of Taoist way, what does it matter if Tao is the governing principle of the universe but not of me? And that's what I'm, I've been trying to say, that Tao is an early attempt to explain how the universe's processes work. For example, in your body, you are automatically breathing, automatically your brain's going, the hormones are flowing, you know, you got all this, this stuff that you're not even aware of, but if your body did not do that, we'd be dead. Could you, could you imagine trying to remember to breathe 24 hours in one day? <laughs> so that's, that's what the Tao say, that's Tao's work. Those are the very processes of nature in your body that's keeping you alive without you being aware of it. That'd be a kind of a Taoist understanding. So, so let's go here to, to number one. This is the most famous one. Uh, most people, when they do the Tao Te Ching, really focus on number one because that's where people look to see, oh, what do they do? So, so, and I'm going to connect this up with the second commandment. Any track one can walk is no path for the eternal Tao way. Any name one might borrow for Tao cannot summon it. Names are just sounds for ordinary things. Okay. In case I get it away. Names are just sounds for ordinary things. <coughs> okay. Uh, before we pass the words, Tao began all there is, but to start the naming, trying to tame it by words, gets a never-ending lotteria, powered by ego and desire leading you astray. Okay, so if you think you got it by words, you're capturing the words, you caged it, nope, nope. That, that, rabbit, that rabbit's gone. Not desiring is the only way to glimpse this mystery. Not desiring. Wow. Desiring, all we see are husks and appearances. But both these, this desiring and non-desiring twins birth in the same darkened mystery. Through this dark lies the path to all wisdom. Darkness is not bad. Mm -hmm. Hollywood says darkness is real bad, but darkness is not bad. This is Tao's style. So what are I going to do? See? <coughs> so, and then I have a few sayings. You'll see this in my book too, but, but I, I isolate a few. And, and Jesus read Isaiah. He knew Isaiah. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me as though we were alike? Okay. And also in Isaiah, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways not your ways, says the Lord. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this idea. And uh, Rumi, but she's not, he's not Christian, but the language of God is silence. All else is poor translation. Mm -hmm. okay. So we have to get rid of our words. And we PhDs need to do, need to, this is good spiritual practice. To get rid of our words. Just, yeah. Okay. So, so. You know, okay. Please. On our way home from last time, we both shared stories about how in the college classrooms, we were at two separate colleges, each of us struggled with the word flow when we were talking about ultimate things. And I wrote a paper on silence for a philosophy class for which the philosopher, who really wanted me to be a philosophy major, but I wasn't, said, you've made silence to your holy grail. Yes, yes. And it was not a compliment, but not, he was trying to be observational. Oh, okay. And do you want to share what you said about your class? <laughs> <laughs> he talked about how in a class taught by Jesuit. Yes. Was it, wasn't it... Um, about it was a philosophy class about religion, the philosophy of religion. Okay. And uh, he was a very good teacher, but I had it in my hand because I was frustrated. I tend to be more of a mystical kind of guy. And I said, you know, what about silence? I yeah. Mean, what about silence? Isn't there some truth in that too? I mean, do we have to always describe and yeah. parse and, and, you know, syllogize and whatever else they were busy doing in their class. And philosophy 
classes just totally bored me. Yeah. I would read for the exams, and yeah. that would be it. We Americans don't like silence or darkness. We don't like it. Uh, we're not used to that. And yet, I, I'm calling these two things wounds. And that's why Taoism is the most feminine religious text ever. Okay? okay. It's most, it's, it's, these, these are places of wounds that need, and a womb needs to be empty before it can become productive. Mm -hmm. Okay? It, it's like an airplane taking off. If we have confused the whole runway with our own crap, can I say crap here? I just did. Okay. <laughs> if, if, we, if we put our own <clears throat> on, the, on the runway, we can't take off because our ego can't get around all of us, the, the, the obstacles. You know, our ego is our worst enemy. Can I get a witness? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is like Jesus. Taoism is an anti-ego project. Okay. So the word God does not produce any understanding or presence of God. You, if I say God, I haven't done a daggum thing. Not a thing. Hasn't produced anything. Hasn't. There's no magic in it. You know, okay. Um, so words are just and only for human affairs. Second commandment, which Jesus knew, is, "You shall not make for yourselves an idol, whether in any form of anything that is in heaven or above, or that is earth beneath, or is there water under the earth." And words are creations, and they become idols. If this, as someone who survived the Southern Baptist Wars of the 1980s, the Bible became the fourth member of the Trinity. Mm -hmm. And if you dis, dis the Bible, you dis, well, the people who said that God was, you know, you, you dis their idea of God, their filters. Okay? So that's one way I think that we could see Jesus and Tao, or at least your traditions and Tao somewhat coalescing. Questions before we go to the next one? Oh, emptiness. Well, can I, I just want to, know, I guess, worth noting, I think this is also present in Judaism, which yeah. you say was... Jewish, well, he was Jewish. At least it's, it's older than this, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, that, they were struggling with this too. Yeah. Judaism is like, you know, yeah. and Moses, the story is, who are you, God? And, yeah. you know, I am, I am who I will be. Yeah. That's all the answer Moses gets. So, I mean... So that's, they kind of came to the same yeah. conclusion. And you couldn't even say the word for God. You yeah, had Hashem. to say Yahweh or, instead. Or Hashem, for the right. name. So God was a nameable, the yeah. unnameable one. So. And, and what this verse is trying to do, and I think what Taoism is trying to do, is to prevent your agenda becoming the, capital T, agenda, capital A. Mm -hmm. Okay. Whenever you see these signs out here with the Christian fish under it, for advertising mm -hmm. something, that's taking God's name and word in vain. Not putting God and damn together. No. It's actually putting your agenda and God's agenda and linking them up so that you can line your pockets. Mm. Or you can line, line your ego. That's what's going on here, is to keep that space empty of words and concepts. Because then we get locked in to the cages of those concepts. And we, it's hard to escape a cage, especially if we've made it. Can I get a witness? Yeah. All right. Okay. Function of emptiness. Tao functions like an empty center between heaven and earth, acting here as a bell, as a stoke fire, or there as a flute to sound music. One can never exhaust these emptied spaces of their various gifts, variations and gifts. Womb, womb, womb. What will run dry is chatter trying to reckon with this mystery. Where's your place? In this silent center. In the womb. Okay. And this, it, this reminds me so much of Philippians mm -hmm. 2. Though Jesus was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself. Mm -hmm. Kenosis in Greek. Kenosis. Taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. Okay. So that's, that's how I think that Jesus and Tao sort of you know, run on the same track for a while. Questions, thoughts? Okay. I'm going to charge ahead. Oh, you may want to discuss the value of emptiness. I think we've already done some of this. But we, what is the value of emptiness? Puts you at the center. Good. Sorry? It puts you at the center. Puts you at the center. You're not listening to your own chatter. Potential. Potential, yes. It's like a blank sheet of paper for an artist. Pure potential. Yeah, I think it allows freedom. Yeah. 
<clears throat> freedom. Yes, you're not locked in. Or if for the musicians, like the Tao says, it's like a flute, which is empty inside, and yet the blowing across it produces music of various kinds. And if you didn't have a space or the silence between the notes, we wouldn't. Right. Exactly, yes. If you, yeah. read, if you read my book, I have, I have I say that. Mozart said it, and other people, you know, you've got to have that spaces for music to happen. Yes, emptiness. Emptiness is also terrifying. Thank you. Yeah, emptiness is terrifying. Mm -hmm. Can you say a couple of cents sure. more? Sure. If we don't have anything to guide us. Yeah, yeah. If we don't have anything from which to. If we're in a totally dark place, yeah, yeah. it's a matter of seconds or minutes before we fall down because we can't yeah. deal with it. Yeah. So our minds don't really work in emptiness very well. Our ego minds. Well, our positional minds, I mean, how our senses, yeah. I mean, they're, even a, a blank canvas mm -hmm, mm -hmm. can be terrifying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. terrifying. But, or writers know. But if, if that blank canvas is not blank, or if the brain is always <coughs> secreting thoughts like saliva, mm -hmm. how far is that going to get you? I don't, I don't in, in, in meditation, the idea is to empty out so that you can then see the reality of things. We only do that a little tiny bit. I know, but, I mean, to, but to practice it softens it. things up and then it makes it easier next time. Right. Can I, can I, put some, I think a blank canvas is only terrifying because you feel like you have to fill it up. If you're content with leaving it blank, it's not terrifying. Okay, all right. But then you're not an artist. I mean, yeah. you know, so then there's a lot of stuff going on. Okay. But I'm going to make sure we're okay. <laughs> oh yeah, we're good. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, not, you know, I'm no. not exactly agree, but... Okay. Well, I, I, I'm just like to address you have a coffee here. the fear <laughs> as expressed in a cultural expression in the 20th century. Yes. It's the fear of the abyss. Abyss yes. is one of those words that was yeah. tossed around an awful lot, still is. We see it in dystopic media. Yeah. Talk, so yeah. much of our film is that. And the idea, I mean, that is what we're moving toward in some way a dark abyss that we're both wanting to conquer and yeah. we're afraid of. And I think what you're talking about with, with emptiness. Is of a different character and order, but in the cultural filter, yeah. there is a fear of that. Yes. Because yeah. you know, one of my favorite authors from the early 20th century talked about literary critics chatting loquaciously <laughs> around the edge of the abyss. Yes, yeah, right. yeah. One of my favorite quotes, and yeah. it really summarized that time and probably our own. Yeah. So I, I think there's there's something to that yeah. fear that also, yeah. for me, I'm curious about this being on a freight thing. I don't think emptiness is the abyss. Thank you. I, I think it is a, a place of intentionality, free will, if we have it, free will intentionality, arrived at through meditation, breathing, mindfulness, so that you understand that all of the crap that I've been putting in my, I'm using the crap word, look, all the crap that we've been putting into our heads and loading ourselves up with, to think we're going to armor ourselves for the day, it really slows us down rather than speeds us up. Uh, yeah. And why do we need to be speeding up? <laughs> well, that's a bad end for me. <laughs> <laughs> because we need more things to slow us down, but, but we we're, really keep, yeah. we're, we're afraid of being slowed down. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. our, high, our caffeinated, Twitter-fed, uh, internet-derived, existent, existential selves wants to go faster and faster and faster. And I am seeing my students, my 18 to 21 year old students, real mental dis-ease because mm -hmm. they're anxious, they can't get enough done, they're so, they're so full of, of expectations, others' expectations, they don't know how to parse them off and make them their own, and disregard all the crap, there's that word again, <laughs> all the, the, gr the, the grunge that other people want them to start wearing and using. Yes? A personal experience, when I was in my 20s, I was working for a big company, and it was a very important job for me. And uh, I found myself out west, and I had a day to relax, and I went to a place called Dead Horse Point. If any of you have ever been above Canyonlands, it's one of the most expansive views of the Canyonlands National Park. And it frightened me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was alone, driving a company car, drove up to this, this parking lot where there was no one there. 
and there was maybe a hawk circling way up there. Yeah, yeah. But out, you could look for like at least 50 miles, and out in the canyons where there's nothing and no people, and you know, nobody ever goes out there except yeah. an occasional. Yeah. But it was it was very frightening to me because I had not prepared myself for that yeah. moment. Okay. I mean, I had not imagined what it was like to face this, and it was like. Is this the abyss that everyone's frightened of? Yeah. I certainly was frightened of it. Yeah. And there I was, yeah. young, powerful, strong. Yeah, we I'm often sure myself, blah blah blah, until I walked up to that edge. If our ideas of abyss are sort of analogs of the word hell, then we will say abyss is bad or emptiness is bad. But if we once we get off of our American mindset and say that emptiness is the friend is what Jesus was doing when he was praying all night, when he was in the desert with Satan for 40 days and 40 nights, he was getting empty. I don't think he's getting filled up. Yeah. Oh, he was getting empty for a preparation. Yes? I have a minute. So the process of emptying yeah. is, I think, all about what you've been saying mm -hmm. and you know, meditating and becoming yeah. still and quiet. The concept of absolute emptiness yeah. is inconceivable, yeah. a lot like God, but mm -hmm. that yeah. can also be terrifying. Yeah. It's yeah. not really the concept. Emptiness is not a concept. Can you say another? I don't think it's a concept. Can you say another couple of sentences? Um, I'll give you an example which I've been thinking of in the last minute or two. The, the fellow who started judo in the Jigero Kano, and in judo when you borrow somebody, you hold the front of their jacket and put one hand on the shoulder. And when people would do that with him, they said it, was, it felt like holding an empty jacket. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As if he weren't there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that, you know, it's a Okay. Well, one way I'm thinking about this is that as human beings, our brains are always looking for stimulation, right? I mean, we're always taking in yeah. Sensations. What, what's next? What's next? What's next? Right. Yeah. But but even beyond that, yeah. if we don't have that, yeah. it can become very destructive to us that summer. Yeah. So, you know, some people go into these deprivation tanks, yeah. Yeah. right? And on purpose to not have any stimulation. Well, you have to kind of have the right attitude to go into that because if you don't, yeah. that could become very, very overwhelming yeah. and frightening. So I think in some ways we're talking about an attitude mm -hmm. and recognizing that words and concepts are reductionistic yeah. by nature. Yeah. And we're trying to remind ourselves our concepts can only frame so much and it's beyond yeah. our ability to conceive and we need to continue to be aware of that. Is that yeah. Yeah. Okay. Those, those who know don't say, those who say don't know. So that's also so that's that book. Say that down. Say that. Those who know. <laughs> those who know. Don't say. Don't say. And those who say. Don't know. Don't know. Okay. Okay. And those who talk never listen. <laughs> and those who listen rarely talk. Well, we can't communicate what we're trying to get to in words. <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is not in my paper. Okay. My we can't. We can't. We can't. It's impossible. You guys are great this one. I don't have to say a thing much. <laughs> okay, let me, let's go to seven, endurance practice. We may never get through this. If we want to do a fourth or fifth week of this, we can certainly... Yeah, go on. Okay, so no, heaven is no. eternal, earth is everlasting. What's your secret? How do they endure? Not having to live for themselves. Mm -hmm. They live long. Mm. Lighten your ego to live wisely. Leave self behind to move forward. Find yourself fulfilled in others. These are the practices of endurance. Hmm. And here's Jesus is saying, for those who want to shake, say, really, say what? Are those saying yours or the this is my This is my translation of down. These, these are my translated words. Okay. okay. For those who want to save their life will lose it. Those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For all the profit they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life. Of what will they give in return for their life? Matthew 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. So some of that. Okay. Uh, the message, uh, Luke 9, you become great by accepting, not asserting. Your spirit, not your size, makes the difference. Okay. Right. Closely related to verse 7 is verse 8. WWWD. What would water do? Okay. 
<laughs> this is Jesus to a T in my understanding of Jesus. How do you live with excellence? Unparalleled excellence. Be like water. Water brings benefits to all things. Circulations. Without thought or discontenting, water seeks the lowest places in the world and there finds the way like Tao. Well, you know, I mean, if you ever had a leak in your home, it's going to always find the basement. Okay? That's what water does. So dwell in lowly settings. Tune the strings of your heart and mind, which is their word for heart, down in the fabulous places. And there are masters in humanity. Speak simply. In governing, practice skilled fairness. In daily work, practice competence. From such skills, you'll know the timing for every justice. So what would water do? Stay low. The wise do not strive, attracting neither enemy nor error. Because when our ego's in charge, we put targets on our back. That's the secret of Tao. When our ego's in charge, we're putting these targets on our back, you know. And Say more. Help me. Uh, if you have, a, if you have a, a, a thing for Carolina and not Duke, okay? then you're going to always be known as the Carolina guy. And when Duke wins, you the object of derision and stuff like that. I mean, or if you're an, uh, uh, someone prone to alcohol, then you put a target on your moral back by saying, I've got this weakness here that I can't control. And so when alcohol comes around, I may not be prepared to work with it, deal with it. So these, these, uh, these, these ego-driven things <laughs> keep us from understanding that we're always painting these targets on our back. Targets that other people can then exploit, or that you never knows back there and yet it's guiding your behavior. Okay, that's, so, so I see Jesus doing the same kind, of, same kind of thing, bringing benefits. I mean, as I said last week, what does water do? It first of all goes places that nobody else goes. It first, gets in there and moistens things up. It starts to loosen hard places. Hello, love? That's what love does, okay? And then it circulates and washes and cleans, even if it's washing meat, okay? And then as it goes on, it takes that long view and, and starts rubbing down those hard places. Hello, Antelope Canyon. Hello, Grand Canyon. Starts rubbing down these places and they become places of beauty. Empty? Yes. But beautiful. That's what water does. It always takes the lowest. This is servant leadership, folks. It takes the lowest place and there um, offers its bounty to anybody who wants to come. Animal, vegetable, mineral, human. Yes? You may uh, be addressing this in the future, but what do you make of Jesus saying that he set his face like flint for Jerusalem? Yeah. I think that he had led a life for the, for the past two and a half years, three years of his life, he had led a life that involved some emptiness, that involved some meditation, prayers, in which he was shedding all the desires of his own heart. Even, so he, even on the cross he said, not my will, but thine. And that was, a, that was that's spiritual practice. So that when he set his face towards Jerusalem, I think it's like Martin Luther King saying, even though he had been threatened and threatened and threatened and threatened, said, I'm going to go to Memphis because I can do no other. And talking about going to the other place, he was there for the sanitation workers. Yes, right. exactly. He was like siding with the people that were goosebumps. You know, goosebumps. The, the, the sanitation workers. He was with the. He was. He was forming a labor union with the poor people. Yeah. Which is what and, and William Barber did yesterday in D.C. Yes, right. Yeah. yeah. And when King died on, on uh, April 4, 68, and most of you know where you were, his rating was as low as anybody in public life ever. And now we put him way up here on a pedestal and, you know, regale him. And I don't think he would have liked that. He was, he was about something completely different than what Martin Luther King Day has sometimes become for us. Okay. But he was, he was there, he was, he was you know, going, towards, going to the low, earning a master's with humanity. Yes? Well, as I remember that story of Jesus going to Jerusalem, the last thing he does before he goes to Jerusalem is to the healing of Bartimaeus. Yeah, 
Yes, right. When I did my little exegesis on that in seminary, they encouraged us to look at geography. Yeah. Geography. And I discovered that where he was in that story was the lowest place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going up. Yeah, yeah. Going up to Jerusalem. Yeah. So there's, there's so many layers in the scripture. Yeah. And it's also, if that in fact is what happened historically, it's, it reinforces exactly what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Uh, to me, it's a, it's a bit paradoxical. Like when I think about Gandhi, ding, ding, ding. he takes the lower place, but he actually is a person of very significant stature yes. spiritually. So to me, it's a, it's a non-dualistic yeah. approach, taking that, yeah. that uh, way of peace yeah. But actually, that elevates the person. Right? But, uh, but it, and, you know what I mean? But he's known for elevating others first. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And that's that what water sense. does. You got to float on. You're, you're, you're never going to drown. You're going to just right. rise with the water. Okay. And I think Martin I was water, pouring water, okay. sometimes through a straw, sometimes through a fire hose, at the uh, mm -hmm. at the movement. Right. Okay. And, and all these people too. You know, their intentionality about not falling into trappings of, of it all. I mean, I've, I've seen Mother Teresa's cell where she lived. Yeah. It was stark. You yeah. know, they'd left it the way she had it. It was like a bed, mm -hmm. a cross. It was like a half this size, not even half this room, and a sink. I mean, so she, she chose her emptiness. Yeah. This is, I'm going to live in the middle of poverty. Yeah. As, you know, as, I mean, Part of it is, it's a literal yeah. move. It's a move. It's. I mean, this is. I think we all. We, you know, we all fall prey to this, especially in America, where we're so we accumulate. Mm -hmm. But they did. You know that, and it's like you have to almost. You have to shed yourself of it, mm -hmm. which is, is what we see in them. They they literally would not. You know, Jesus didn't have a pillow for his head. He wouldn't do it. They don't listen, but I call it, I'm going to do some anti-God stuff here. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a discernment. Do I become atheist? Or do I become some kind of modified version of a believer? So I have been loosened, uh, I'm loosing myself from the ego-driven ideas of God that I've had, usually platonic ideas of perfection. Uh, so I'm loosening self from those things. And I don't know what's coming next, but I'm emptying it out of all the usual God images, especially the human ones. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's it's terrifying because we've talked about emptiness can be terrifying, but it's also I'm confident that if there's a God, this is exactly what God would be doing already. Yeah. So anyway, so it's the idea of letting go of God. Why? Because our God is too small. Mm -hmm. Always too small. So let go of the small stuff in order to then be able to be grasped by the large stuff. I'm, uh, I'm reminded of some illustrations in the book of Zen paintings of the masters. Yes, yes, yes. And, and they're la there's so famous the Shan uh, I forget their names, Jitoka was one. <clears throat> and they often portrayed laughing. Yes. And I think that. Is intended to dissipate ideas about things. Yeah, laughter. Just laughter is so. It, it, it yeah. breaks up. It, it breaks up pretension. It breaks up ego, yeah. craziness, and yeah. it, and it, it dissipates stuff. So you, you move toward emptiness through laughter. Yes. Right? Yes. You you loosen it loosens up your own c word crap. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and I, I'm married as many of you are as a partner and you usually. When we are laughing together, we're feeling closest together because our ego is not getting in the way of desires for, for what they might do for me. Okay? But it is, it's, it's great. Okay. Early retirement. Number nine. A cup filled to the brim, past the brim is waste. Can you say coffee cup? A knife over sharpened is going to lose its edge. Fill a space until it's jade, gold or jade, who can guard it? Overwork yourself with honor, status, pride. How do you avoid ruin? Too much of anything leads straight to meddling chaos. Early retirement is heaven's nature. I love this one. 
So Thoreau said a person's rich in, to, in proportion to the number of things they can afford to let alone, but Jesus kind of agrees. What good would it do to get everything you want and lose you, the real you? Mm -hmm. Questions, thoughts, stories, objections. You seem to choose Eugene Peterson as the message. Uh, sometimes when I, I would choose all kinds of versions to make sure I it, it got the right one. Yeah, yeah. Well, he caught it. He had he has that sense in, in that translation. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's, it's a paraphrase, really. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. As only the rich people know. So all you, us, us rich people know. When we have gold and jade, we have to invest in safety deposit boxes, <laughs> insurance, extra security, worry. The worry industrial complex we develop about riches is not considered an investment, but the amount of energy we put into worry is no less an investment than security costs. With less room for ego, there's more room for others. See verse 10, which is coming up, I believe. Yes on such investments. Consider how with these, without these investments we are freed up for seeing people as more important than things. Ding, ding, ding. More important. And that's, I think that's a Jesus virtue right there. He saw people not just as things, not just as taxes, but different taxes, but as children, people of God. You can't worship money and God. Yeah. It's hard to do both. Yep. Tax on ownership. By the way, these titles are my own. There's no, there's no uh, established titles to these. Used the, all of the 81 verses used to be all one verse. And then somebody, just like your Bible, came along and put chapters and things like that in them. So, okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. Just as you, let's see. Um, well, let's see what I'll do. Just as you carry yourself and your body, can you see all things as one? Focus as you are in your, all your solidified power, can you sum up the soft suppleness of being a newborn? As attentive to you as you are to self-cleansing, can you see life itself as stainless? As careful as you are for people, can you lead without the usual self-calculus of being in charge? Where's my control freaks? Yeah. As you enter or leave heaven's mighty gates, or even this church building, what are the chances of doing it without an ego rise? Are you watching me? Are you watching me? Is somebody watching? Can I put this on Facebook? As knowledgeable as you are of all business in the four directions, can you know nothing for a change? As in, for a change, for a real change. Consider how the midwife assists as she begins and nurses life she does not own. Consider your a midwife said, that's my baby. But she just comes in, does her job, leaves. Deep virtue's way leaves neither trail nor fingerprints. Use, do not own, because ownership is a tax. Mm. Bam. Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. The emphasis here is that we get married to ownership, accumulation, and the my, me, mine thinking. The things we become accumulate will soon divorce us. They are unfaithful life partners. Thoughts, comments, stories, objections. Let's move on. The function of is part two. Can I, I got a question for me. So, Taoism. Did it, you know, so important in Christianity, the community yeah. is vital part of Christianity. It is essential. <laughs> because we cannot even, I mean, we, yeah. we can't participate in the way without community, as far as that sort of a, a foundational mm -hmm. principle of Christianity. Yes. Is that because we can't know this in ourselves. We need yes. mirrors of one another to help us see these mm -hmm. shadow parts of ourselves. Yeah. Taoism, it doesn't have that element, does it? Of sort of, you need one another, or sort of doesn't advocate for community? In the United States, we don't have Taoists congregations. Mm -hmm. okay. There may be one in you know, mm -hmm. couple in California or mm -hmm. New York. But, but in, in originally in China, Taoism was much more popular. It was a kind of diet thing on how to live forever. 
It was uh, getting rid of ego. It has the whole Chinese medicine. It, it's the foundation for all of Chinese medicine, traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, and so there, there, and there are schools. There were Taoist schools, mm -hmm. maybe still today. There, there, there still is. We just don't happen to have them here. Okay. So the, the, this, the idea of a sangha or a church or a temple in Taoism is not a foreign idea. But, but what I'm hearing from David is not just having a church, but being in community and relationship with other people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what okay. I'm hearing, too, mm. is this is a very individual thing. You do this yeah. because you do it within yourself, and it has nothing to do with my relationship with other people, whereas Christianity does. And here's where I think I take issue with all the other mm -hmm. translations. Excuse me for being different. All the other translations can assume you can just take this book, go on a retreat, and come back wonderful and happier. And yes, you can. But as you know, if all, you, if all you're doing is just for yourself, that soon grows pale. It soon has lost its luster. And we need, as you know, you social justice people, you need other people to keep you hot or in the movement, you need other people to give you ideas, you need other people to help pick you up when you're down. You know this. And to be humble. And be humble. Yes. <laughs> Anybody humble him lately? What is the word, does the word responsibility come in mm. somewhere? Uh, we, we are responsible for something? Is that part of emptying? It was, it was, since Tao is not personal, is not speaking to us, uh, like, a, like, like a human being, mm -hmm. this is a feature that you can then come to yourself. You, as everybody in the room has already done, you have this information, now what am I going to do with it? How do I become responsible for that which I know? So it's, it operates in that same kind of human way. And this is where I think it's important to have, if you have a project, if you have a, a, a social justice initiative, prisons, immigrants, a, a church in Cuba, it's, it's always good to have other people to, to, to share this with you. Okay. So you know, there's not an obligation. There's no verse that says you must now meet together. No, it'll never be like that. But you realize, because that was going to take you to the heart of yourself, you realize that you can't do it alone. Your ego is only taking you so far, and that's like a quarter way. You need other people to help finish and continue. I have a thought, too, about the community aspect. Okay. I think we're talking from our Western culture and viewpoint. My understanding of Oriental culture, Chinese culture, is they have a very different sense of the individual. Yes. Yeah. It's a much more... Um, they don't have a sense of individual as we do. Yeah. It's um, So it's already baked in, kind of the sense of being part of the whole, yeah. which is very different from our culture, yeah. which is more individualistic. I've been married twice, mm -hmm. and both spouses have been Confucianists. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so, uh, so when the young people, when the younger generation gathers, in your households, usually it's the younger generations that are going to say, we're going to go for ice cream, we're going to watch this movie, we're going to do this. Yeah, not so. You know, you're there to see the whole picture, you're there to serve the parents. It's that idea that... that you know, Sounds good, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in Japanese culture, they have this, this saying, see that nail, pound it in. Because you don't want to snag the cultural fabric. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Or the desert fathers and mothers on a path of solitary. I think so. Yeah. I, I think they get this. What? I can. But the, the, the desert, desert fathers solitary. and mothers have a path of solitariness. Yeah. Yeah. So the idea that community is necessary is challenged there. Yeah. They were still in the community, but they were not a community. Well, well, they kind of had a loose. I don't know. I, I can't ask you. It's a great question. I don't know. Um, just don't know. Yeah, I, I think that's, I mean, I appreciate the question. 
but I think it implies a kind of divisiveness inherent in that way of thinking. Yeah. I, I'm talking about the retreat happy hippie lifestyle. I can just pick this book out of the forest and I can come back all enlightened and all this stuff. And, I'm, and that's total crap. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's a good start. It's a good start. But it's not a good finish. Just one way I'm personally saying this is practical for life and community is folks I know talk about social systems. Yeah. And they say, if you want to really transform the world, you have to start with yourself yeah. and from a very um, ethical or responsible perspective because you don't want to do harm to others based on your own unexamined crap. It's pretty common across a lot of different disciplines yeah. at this point as a practice. So I see this yeah. as a practice and a tool and not just for practical reasons but also for, for the world. Yeah. Yeah, Socrates says the unexamined life is not a human one. Okay, it's not a human one. And so the unexamined crap is in, inhuman, and it dehumanizes others, because we will then use it as our filter to see and act towards and do tax policies and housing policies and, and, and lending policies to those that we don't see as mirrors of ourselves. That's why the golden rule is so important. And even Tao Te Ching has three instances of, 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 of the golden rule. All right, who needs to leave soon? Okay, who needs, who can stick around? Okay, I'll stick around as well, pardon, most of we can. Okay, function of emptiness. The hub of a cartwheel has an empty center. There's an empty, there's an E word again. Which is more important to movement than those 30 spokes radiating out from it. The hub center is its functioning part. There's my bowl, clay workers. Fashion a bowl all the day long, but it's its inner emptiness, not its outer art that gives it its function. The house's empty center makes it livable. Likewise, the empty center of a window makes it usable or door frame. Otherwise, how would you get home? Form has its place, but emptiness is the servant who serves. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. John 3.30, John the Baptist talking, he must increase, I must decrease. And then Philippians 2, that whole suffering thing. Uh, I mean, yeah. Okay. 16, I include Jesus' words, do not fear. Um, does this, and uh, so, the end of fear. Pledge allegiance to unlimited emptiness. Dedicate yourself to uncompromised silence. And notice how the 10,000 things, you know, the crap, arises, and about how each will then return to its roots without you doing a thing. Return to the root is the start, finish, and fruit of tranquility. It's the why of Tao, the purpose of eternity. Have this permeate your mind and become enlightened, but stay ignorant, and your future is wild chaos and disaster. When you align yourself with your eternal source, your life evolves into acceptance of all that overlays onto the dignity of all that borders with heaven, the source of all that follows Tao, which is eternal. See how these things Mm -hmm. Interlock with each other, lockstep. But one's not more important than the other. They're all there. When you're lying like this, fear can never come near. All right. Romans 8 15. You did not receive a, a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption. Plus, there's seven to six other places where a prophet Jesus read, or Jesus himself spoke directly, do not fear. What's the angel's first word to Mary? And I ever get yeah, the angel? Mm -hmm. Do not fear. Fear not. Fear not. Fear and not. The too. Yeah. Yes, the right. Yeah. Okay. So, and, and, and fear is often realized, it's, fear manifests itself when we're, when we're off centered, when we don't know who we are. That's how I think when fear really gets hold of our yin yang. Okay? Um, because remember that in the Tao worldview, you're no different than the makeup of the universe. The same processes that, that are making your hormones flow right now and making you breathe are the same process of the universe four billion, four, 14 billion years ago. Same point, nothing's changed. This is how it's a theory of everything. And tremendous fear-reducing confidence. Confidence resides in knowing that you and the universe operate from the same ancient playbook, sharing the same operating system. And where this comes in with Jesus is the kingdom of God. 
the kingdom of God is that program, that process. And if you are aligned with God, there's no fear. You're doing the right thing. Oh, they may cut you down. They may assassinate you. They may, you know, dox you on Facebook. But you've got the confidence. I know what I'm doing. I know whose I am, who I am. And you can't shake that. And that's the kind of people we need today. That's the kind of children we need to start bringing up. Don't get me started. Okay. <clears throat> Necessary interruptions. Interruptions. I'm going to just, for lack of time, I'm just going to say that in every spiritual tradition in the world, everyone, there is a, 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 a ritual, a practice of interruption. And what needs to get interrupted? The C word again. Because everyone, every, every spiritual tradition says that C word, that crap word, is going to interfere with your ability to see and live like we want you to. So you need an interrupting thing. So for Buddhists and, and Hindus, it's, it's that idea of centering, mindfulness, meditation. Okay? For Jews, it's Sabbath and the calendar of all the high holy days. For Jews, it's also, I mean, for Christians, it's also Sabbath, but also taking the body and blood of Jesus in you, interrupting your own body and blood, or, you know, if now part of you, and yourself is not so important. So it's this interruptions, okay? Um, so this is holy interrupt. I call it holy interruption. I have a whole sermon on this if anybody wants to hear sometime. <laughs> but that's Jesus' entire mission, to bring a sword to the structures that were hurting people, a sword of, you know, to cut things off, to, to help people stop separating themselves from one another. In, in, and this is not really well done, I need to say, but, but, but the idea that we, you can interrupt social injustice. Just those four guys at the Greensboro, you know, just ordering lunch was a holy interruption. They got so many people angry, and yet it's the right thing. Interruption. And that's when you become a Taoist, you understand you don't need to do much. You can just, by being who you are, walking into a room even, you can become that kind of interrupting power. That, that, you know, all the, all the, rip, all the, uh, the 10,000 things just go out the window. Because one thing's important. Does a lot of this come with age? I'm afraid so. Does it come with age? Yes, I'm afraid so. Because I know, as I get older, there's so, so much. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. And I live it, I feel I live it. Yeah, Richard Rohr has a book uh, that talks about the two stages of life. Yeah, yeah. Material uh, all, falling like upwards. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, you know, we sometimes need to go through those. You know. Yeah. But it then teaches us how to be wise. See, I think a young person. Yeah. Has to be involved in this and that. And yeah. And there, it's a learning experience, and what really counts in, in life. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. I think uh, institutions go through, uh, you know, this holy interruption too. Mm -hmm. Churches, for example, this church is going through at least two holy interruptions since I've been there, and I've only been there a couple of years. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, <laughs> the experience of that can be very disrupting and yeah. very upsetting. And when people walk into a room, you feel the anger associated mm. with this or that, whatever the issue was. But it, you know, if it brings people to uh, a deeper spirituality, yeah. I mean, that's probably a good thing. Yeah. I mean, I think we always need to have people saying, the temple, the temple. Yes, so yes. they can say, no, 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 it's not about the temple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, interruption. Uh, I challenge my students to, let me have your cell phones for 48 hours. <laughs> Interrupt your lives. I mean, your cell phone has never changed your life, right? Said, Not really. Not mine. Yeah. And so, but they, yet they're addicted. But some of us, and they are, my students are especially addicted. So give me that which you're addicted to. Or give me your pass, password for Facebook for 48 hours. 
I'll change it and then give it back to you. <laughs> but yeah, and, and, and what do you do with an interruption? That space, that empty space that, you're, that you now have because the phone is not there. And they realize the papers that come back are incredible. I realize that I was suckered out. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I realized that I had no control. I had lost my free will. And that, that's, the, that, that's what the, 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 inter, the power of interruption is amazing. And every spiritual vision knows it. So follow those interruption practices. Lent. Mm -hmm. Holy Communion. Prayer. Maybe retreats. Whatever you do. You know, it's, it's an interruption of the yada yada everyday stuff that really has no importance. It's, it's our rituals. You know, we go through this just like you know, have that unthinking third cup of coffee. Hello, can I get the yeah? But what do we do? With it? What do you do? So I could just add something about illness. Too, yeah. Yes. That having been through some emergency stuff um, when I was actually just about ready to leave seminary. Talk about holy interruption. Mm -hmm. Not to be ordained, and there I am, you know, recovering from major surgery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And wow, it changed my life. I mean, emptied. Yes. You know, wiped off. You know, went back to seminary, and everybody, my my committee at the parish I was doing field ed said the best thing I'd done in two years at St. Margaret's was to get sick. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't me that did it. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I just kind of had to go with yeah. what what was happening, but through. Grace and also just the nature of the, what happened to me, I was given the emptiness mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. peace of being empty. Yeah. So I think sometimes, you know, we think we have to will our way into this, but sometimes we can make sense of what's happening to us by seeking this where water would go, yeah. this downward path, and embracing the emptiness. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Maybe this will be our last one. So, uh, okay. 22, emptying brings completion. The humbled have a foretaste of completion. The twisted alone will understand the straight. Only the exhausted will find renewal. When you have little, you'll gain much. Now, put this in Jesus' Beatitudes format. Mm -hmm. Blessed are the humbled, they'll have a foretaste of completion. Blessed are the twisted, who will understand the straight. Blessed are the exhausted, they'll find renewal. Blessed when you have little, then you'll find yourself gaining much. Okay, so I think this is a, a beatitude. Okay, um, this is again Jesus. Not focused on self, all know him. Not focused on being right, all see him as a model. Not see, need to show off, assures his success. Not a glory seeker, his glory will really last and last. Not a disputer, the sage has cultivated no one under heaven to dispute against him. No target, again, no target. Okay, I think this passage describes Jesus' personality perfect, meekness. As Eminem, the rapper, said, you've got to lose yourself. Ah. Or, as Jesus said, it's easier for a cow to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Okay. It's that kind of thing. Okay. Final questions, thoughts, comments? I enjoyed this very much. I, I enjoyed it more. <laughs> what, we'll do, what we'll do is uh, um, I'll see if there's possibility to come back because we're, about, we're probably halfway through today. If you want to do some more on this or you just want to really keep it at three and that's where we go into the whole idea of uh, you know, the power of peace that that was in this. Okay, but um, um, yeah, I do too. So. If, if you have a book that you want me to sign, I'll be glad to do that. Uh, this week, next week. Okay. So I'm going to sign off now. Thank you so, so much. May your days begin in peace and end in radical hope. That's why we're here, folks. That's why we're here. Thank you so much.